Hi, this video is going to be about the Dell UltraSharp webcam. Uh, that's what I have here. It's the ult it's called the UltraSharp. It's a 4K Ultra HD webcam, 1 over 2.8 large sensor for high image quality, video noise reduction for great video experience, and uh, it's uh, certified for Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and Windows Hello. Why would you buy a 4K webcam? Uh, you wouldn't do it because of, of Teams and Zoom, because those uh, services compress the, the video to the point that having a 4K webcam doesn't do you any good. You might as well use a, a Logitech C270 720p webcam at $15 or $20, and uh, that would do just as well for you on Teams and Zoom. But uh, I wanted to see if I could do a, a YouTube video introduction or something like that using the webcam. Uh, first of all, this is uh, a much less expensive option than buying like a real camera uh, if you don't already have a real camera that you can use for this. But it's also the ease of it because it just plugs right into the computer and saves the file. I can use QuickTime Player to record the video and save it right to the file and put it right in the video editor. And I don't have to set up a camera on a tripod and, and all that stuff. I can just do it uh, normal. So this is it. This is, this is the picture you get on the UltraSharp webcam. For this intro, I did set it on a tripod using the included tripod mount. And I'm looking toward a window for the best lighting. I don't actually don't have any lights in the room on at all right now. But I just I wanted to get this and see if it made sense to use this for like a YouTube introduction or something like that. And is the quality of this acceptable? Um, I'm not expecting professional quality for $200. But, um, you know, is it good enough to do a YouTube introduction or, or whatnot? This video is done with the Mac Pro slant since I am a user of a Mac Pro. And I wanted to see if this 4K would give me uh, just a camera that I can do YouTube and things real easy with. Almost all webcams include built-in microphones, uh, but this one doesn't have one. So, which is okay because if I'm using it for this purpose, I'm not going to use a built-in microphone anyway. I'm going to use a better quality microphone. And so what I have here is the Behringer Ultra Voice uh, XLR dynamic microphone. And I'm using it with a Behringer UMC22 audio interface. The uh, microphone itself is on sale right now on Amazon for $21.75. Then we have $49 is the cost of this audio interface. There is a less expensive model, but it has knobs on the top. And where I wanted to put it here, I wanted to be able to get to it under the monitor. And so having all the controls on the front and the inputs on the front will work better for me. So I went up a model and got the uh, Behringer UMC22. That's $49. The microphone stand is $15.95. And the cable is $8, this XLR cable. So all that together is about $95. So I have $95 invested in this microphone and audio interface, which is near the same cost of a, you know, a, a new USB microphone, like a podcasting microphone. But I think this gives me more flexibility, right? Because if I want to use a lavalier microphone, well, I can just use that. Or if I wanted to use two microphones, it has uh, the XLR plus a, an RCA input, and I could use two microphones at the same time through this. So, you know, I just think it gives me a little more flexibility. And uh, I think the sound quality is pretty good. What do you think? All right, and here is what it looks like at my typical desk setup. I have a ring light in the back of my hutch. You may have seen that in the other view. I think you can see it there. But I have the ring light uh, turned on. If I didn't have that, it would be super, super dark in this hutch. Uh, it's like a cave. The only light would be the light from the monitor itself. But with the ring light, uh, I do get a good bit of illumination. I also have a, an overhead light on and some light from the window over on that side that's uh, bringing in some light that you see over on there. Um, so what do I think? Just looking at it on the QuickTime recorder, I think that the uh, colors and everything in the background look really good. Um, I guess the, the, the colors in the foreground look okay. I have a gray sweatshirt. That's not much for telling anything. I, I think it looks pretty sharp. It is a 1080p recording, and I uh, haven't done anything higher than 1080p because uh, QuickTime, you know, this is the high-quality recording setting on QuickTime, and I've also used it with OBS a little bit, and I don't see any option uh, to do any better. By the way, this is a 78-degree field of view. I'll show you the 65, 
and then I'll go out to the 90. So that's the full wide field of view. And then uh, again, I can do the AI auto framing. So it'll just kind of zoom in on, on my face. And if I move and stay there for a little bit, it'll um, catch up with me. Nice, smooth movement. If I move over here, it'll do the same thing. It gives me a second and make sure that I'm going to stay there uh, for long enough to move over. And it moves it over and then uh, keeps me centered in the frame. So um, yeah, so uh, that's what it looks like. Tell me in the comments what you think about the quality. Since the Mac Pro doesn't come with USB 3.0 ports and this camera does require USB 3.0, I wanted to see what would happen if I plugged it into one of the Mac Pro's USB 2.0 ports. And this is it. Uh, so as you can see, the quality is really uh, pretty bad. The sharpness isn't there. Looks like we're, you know, low resolution, like a, maybe an old MacBook uh, webcam from way back when. And you also lose the HDR and the AI auto framing capabilities. Those uh, don't show up as uh, being able to be switched on when you use them with the USB 2.0. So if you're going to use this webcam with a classic Mac Pro, you do want to use it with a USB 3.0 card in the PCIe slot. Now, I've already unwrapped everything, so of course it does all come wrapped up in plastic and such. But here's the camera itself. It's a aluminum construction. Kind of a dark space gray, a little darker, I would say, than Apple's space gray color. The lens cap comes off of one end and magnetically uh, sticks on the other, or magnetically sticks on over the lens. And below, here's the USB cable. It takes a USB 3 connection. The USB-C end goes into the camera, and the other end goes into your computer. This is the tripod mount. and it magnetically attaches into the camera. Or really, you can just leave that on the tripod and then snap the camera on and off magnetically. This, of course, is the monitor clip. And it's a pretty tight fit getting in there, but it fits. And then, of course, I pull it off as I'm opening the clip up. And some information. Dell Ultra Sharp Webcam Quick Start Guide. warranty and support information, and of course, safety, environmental, and regulatory information. Let's take a look at the software setup. Here on Dell's website, you'll choose accessories, webcams, and go over here and uh, narrow it down to the two Dell webcams. The one on the left is the 2K. The one we're looking at is the 4K webcam on the right. So we'll go into there and pick the uh, driver's choice. Scroll down to the bottom and get started. Drivers and downloads. And here's where you select the operating system. It comes up with Mac OS already selected, but you can uh, get the software for Windows 10 or for Windows 11. And here's the software we want. It's Dell Peripheral, I'm sorry, Dell Display and Peripheral Manager. Wow, that's hard to say. Dell Display and Peripheral Manager application. So it's not just a webcam application. It's also a monitor control application. And I have a Dell UltraSharp monitor and haven't been able to get any of that working at all. It tells me that my uh, monitor firmware is not up to date. So I check that. Uh, the firmware is up to date. Um, also, you saw it just came up and said um, Mac 2018 or above. I'm guessing that's their way of saying that it requires a USB 3 USB connection rather than USB 2. I did try it on USB 2 and uh, because that's what the Mac Pro comes built in with, and I just wanted to see if it would uh, work, and it doesn't. It works kind of, and it gives you a very, very low resolution, poor quality picture but uh, you wouldn't buy a webcam like this to get a picture as poorly as that shows. So you do want a USB 3 card in your Mac Pro to use this. So installation successful. Um, of course, before I can even answer one question, it pops another window up. It, it is kind of rude, this, this uh, software installer. 
But uh, yeah, we'll move that to the trash and go ahead and open the software. You see up here, it's already given me pop-ups about notifications and such, so which are right in the way, of course, of uh, what I want to do. Not even sure what I did to make that come up. Okay, so here's the software. You can see it's a monitor application software. Most everything on here is grayed out because it doesn't work with my monitor. And here's what the software looks like. Most of the menu on the left are for functions that we don't have. We only have the webcam. It has four presets, default, smooth, vibrant, and warm. So you can choose these one at a time and see the, the different looks that that creates. I chose to add a new preset, and I've been tweaking my settings just on, on my own preset. The webcam control button, we have uh, three fields of views to choose from, 65, 78, or 90 degrees. Autofocus on or off, uh, priority exposure or frame rate on the bottom, and then your color and image settings are here. And, of course, zoom in and out, and with these little arrows here, you can do a, basically a pan-tilt-zoom control. The end. Thanks for watching.